Hi, I am currently working on my own roguelike game about bow and arrow combat. In this episode I will create some new content and also add a simple inventory to my game. So let's get into it. Speaking of new content, I made a new player ability. Before you could only shoot arrows and dash away from enemies. But now you can trigger a push ability by pressing shift. This blue shockwave sort of thing knocks enemies back and deals some damage. It consumes much more power than your dash, but is quite useful in some situations. If your enemy invades your personal space, then just knock him away. And the ability can also be useful to just deal some damage and so encourages the player to play more aggressive and closer to enemies. But I think the player needs some more encouragement to use this ability, because I rarely use it myself. Or maybe I just have to get used to it, I don't know. So now it's time to add a new enemy to the game, so it doesn't get boring. I thought about an enemy you can use against other enemies. Like an enemy which explodes on death and so kills other enemies along with it. So first up I designed this new enemy in Illustrator. And then imported it into Unity. Then I made this new explosion effect and voila, the enemy is pretty much done. I think he looks pretty fine and the explosion looks quite cool and powerful as well. Let me know what you think about this design. I made it so the enemy explodes on death, but also explodes when the player gets too close. Now it actually poses a real threat to the player and isn't just a tool to kill other enemies. When you get hit by this explosion, you also get knocked back and receive some pretty good damage. So you should really avoid getting hit. In the last episode, I made the power bar passively regenerate a tiny amount of power after not using it for a few seconds. This was already much better than not regenerating power at all and made it much less frustrating to run out. But the extremely slow regeneration was also quite annoying a lot of the time. I actually struggled a bit to figure out a better solution to these problems. What I now ended up on is this. The power now regenerates with a 0.8 second delay after using it and is actually pretty fast. But to counteract just waiting the power meter to fill up all the way, it can only regenerate a small section of this bar. So as you can see the power only fills up to a certain point and only by collecting power shards you can get past this point. And then the passive regeneration will work again up until the next section. This system makes playing more interesting and adds another level of skill on top. You now have to manage your power consumption and have to decide if you want to spend more power, which lets you regenerate less in total. I would love to have your opinion on that. Since last time I've gotten some amazing feedback about the obelisks. It would be pretty amazing if you could see how many obelisks you have activated and completed already and how many there are more to go. In the top center of the screen there are some little dots which represent the total amount of obelisks in one level. When finding and activating one, this gets represented as well. And when you finally complete the challenge, there is a subtle animation and the dot gets highlighted. Now it's easy to tell how many more obelisks are not completed yet. And when you complete all of them, these dots disappear and the boss health bar appears at the same place. And when we are already on the topic of the HUD, I also added a small indicator for your abilities in the bottom right. There you can see when an ability is being used and also the button that triggers it. Now let's move on to the big topic. I wanted to implement a player inventory to see all your collected upgrades. But first I need to explain why exactly I want to make this inventory. In the last devlog, I introduced upgrades to the game. These improve the player and give you special powers. I also held a poll about what I should call these upgrades to make them sound more unique. It turns out you guys prefer calling them fragments, which I also really like. But let's get back on track. These fragments can be collected by the player and instantly affect him. Like this health fragment instantly increases your maximum health. But this isn't how I want him to work. Collecting a fragment should only store it in your inventory first without having any effect yet. When in the inventory you can assign a fragment to your player character which now increases your stats. But you may be wondering why this is even necessary. 
The player character should only be able to hold a small amount of fragments at any time. So now you have to decide which fragments you want to use and which you just want to store in your inventory for now. I plan on making these fragments upgradable with some sort of currency. So for example, you can level up a health fragment to increase your maximum health even more. This currency should mainly be earned by sending unused fragments which are stored in your inventory. I think this system would add a lot of depth and would allow the player to explore all sorts of combinations of fragments. So all that is left is to actually implement this system. I started by making the fragments not apply any effect when picking them up. And when pressing tab, you open the inventory. As you can see, there are two rectangles, which can hold these fragments. The bottom one holds all the unused fragments and the top one stores the used ones. You can drag and drop fragments between the two. By placing a fragment in the top container, the player gets affected by the fragment and your stats update in real time. This UI is really scuffed at the moment and is pretty buggy as well. But before fixing any of that, I changed the containers to only hold a maximum of 3 containers. This worked pretty well, but it got even more buggy as you can probably see. After reworking the whole thing several times and getting constantly frustrated for a week, I've improved it a lot. The fragment slots are now arranged in a circular layout. And on top of that, all the buggy behavior is fixed. It's pretty easy to rearrange all the fragments as you like and the UI doesn't look terrible anymore. I will now need to make more fragments and further improve the UI, but I wanted to change something else first. Up until this point, the player had three different arrow types to switch between by pressing buttons on your keyboard. I realized that this way of switching between arrows was really distracting and while playing, I mainly just thought about the standard arrow and didn't use the switching mechanic. I now decided to just give the player two arrow types which you can charge by either holding the left mouse button or the right mouse button. This heavily simplified using multiple arrows and changing between them. It's much easier to change the arrow you want to shoot depending on the situation. And you only have to think about two options which are not as stressful as handling three different arrows. But also this happened while changing something? Pretty interesting, but not that fair gameplay wise. Luckily, this was pretty easy to fix. Last but not least, I wanted to expand the fragment system. Currently, there are only fragments which make the player character stronger. But of course, there should also be ways to enhance your arrows. So, there should be two types of fragments. Fragments for the player character and fragments for your arrows. I actually thought of this while making the fragment system, so it should be quite simple to add a different fragment type. Because I quickly added a fragment which makes arrows move much quicker. And as you can see here, the inventory got some new slots. These slots on the left and the right side are for the primary and secondary arrow. Now we can drag the fragment on one slot and voila, the arrow is much faster. And you can also apply the fragment on the other arrow. So, let's make two more arrow fragments. First up, I made a fragment which increases arrow damage, but also increases the time it takes to fully charge the arrow. Pretty neat, I think. And this new orange fragment makes your arrows detonate on impact. This explosion then deals some splash damage to nearby enemies, as you would expect. There are endless possibilities for new arrow fragments, so if you have any special or interesting ideas, let me know in the comments. And that's it for this devlog. Leave a like and subscribe if you want to follow my progress on this game. And as always, see you soon.